This Akron challenge is called palindrome index. The instructions say, given a string of lowercase letters in the range of A and Z, determine the index of a character that can be removed to make the string a palindrome. There may be more than one solution, but any will do. If the word is already a palindrome or there is no solution, return negative one. Otherwise, return the index of a character that can be removed to change the string into a palindrome. So here I'm in notepads. Let's say we have a string called S. This year, the word level is a palindrome because when you spell this word backward, you still have the same string. But let's say that we had something like this here. I add a Y here. So now we need to determine what is the index of a character inside that string here that can be removed to make that string a palindrome. We know that the index can be the index of the character Y, which is index one. So in our function, we could return one to say that if we remove that character Y, we're going to get a palindrome. So what I'm going to do is have two variables here. They're going to serve as trackers or indices inside my logic. And at first, i is going to be zero because it's going to point to the beginning of the string. And j here is going to point to the last index in my string. At every iteration, I'm going to compare if the characters match together. So in this case, the character at index i here is l and the character at index j is also l. So this is fine. I can now advance i by one and decrement j by one. Now the character at index i is y and the character at index j is e. These two characters are not the same. So I'm going to assume that the character at index i is the culprit. So now I'm only going to advance i by one and leave j intact. So now the character at index i is going to be e. And when I compare these two is the same thing. So I can now decrease j by one and increase i by one. So they are now both pointing to the same index. Now I can compare these, they are the same, and I can exit my for loop because we don't want i to be greater than j or j to be less than i. Otherwise, we're going to have double processing and we don't want that. So now that we've processed the full string here, I want to return the index of i where the error occurred. So in our function for this Akron challenge, we need to record when the error occurs so that we can have information like this here and say that the error occurred when i was equal to one and j was equal to four. If we have a string like this, for example, at first we compare l and l is the same, then we compare e and y. So we assume that i is a culprit. We move i by one, i will now point to v and j will remain y. So when we compare these two, we get a second error. And if we have a second error, then we know that i was not the culprit because we moved i further at the first error. And now that we have a second error, we know that J is the one that needs to move instead. So we can stop everything and return the index of J where the error occurred. So in code, this is what it looks like. We have our function here called palindrome index. Our string here is the parameter. And I have I and J here. I starts at the beginning, J starts at the end. And then I have these two values here to record the indices of I and J whenever an error occurs. So I also have this Boolean value here, this Boolean variable to record if an error occurred. If a string has only two characters or one character, it's automatically a palindrome. I only want to start my processing if my string has three or more characters. Now, if my string has three or more characters, then I can have a while loop. And I want that loop to run so long as I is less than or equal to j, like I explained, I'm going to compare the values at position i and position j at every iteration. Before I explain this line, I want to explain this here because I want to record when an error occurred. So this becomes true. And I also want to record the indices when the error occurred. And then I move i by one, but I don't move j because I'm assuming that i here is a culprit. If these two values are the same, then I'm going to go ahead and move i by one and I decrease j by one at every iteration. But if at some point I have another error, then I can stop everything and conclude that j was the culprit. So I return the value that I stored in j when the error occurred. If we were able to process our full string and we never concluded that j was the culprit, then we're going to verify if there was an error. And if there was one, then we're going to return the index of i when the error occurred. Otherwise, if the string was a palindrome, then we're going to return negative one. So now I'm going to submit this code right away. 
and we've passed all the test cases. So that's it for this current challenge called Palindrome Index. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you next time.